was a there was a configuration I was working on in the old home lab. I had a single switch. I had a single DHCP server, and I wanted to hand out IP addresses, one subnet to one group of devices, one subnet to another group of devices, but they were all connected to the same switch. And I thought, you know what? I am just going to set up a DHCP server, get the MAC addresses for all the devices, and I'll put reservations in each of the two scopes. So I'll have two scopes, reservations for some clients in one, reservations for some clients in another scope. Make sense? And then, even though they're on the same switch and everything, they'll get the IP address from the server that has the reservation, they'll, and they'll be in different subnets that way, so unless I want them to, they won't be able to easily communicate. They'll have to, you know, change IP address and stuff. So, it made a lot of sense to me at the time. So, I set it up like that, and tried it out, and... <sighs> crash and burn. Did not work at all. I needed to set up one more thing for that to work. Does anyone know what I need to set up in that scenario? What was missing? Go ahead and chat in your thoughts for that. And you can always chat in, not sure. Um, and yeah, several of you are chatting in, not sure. I'm not seeing anyone <laughs> chat in. Um, the right answer. Here's what was missing, and it's not going to work. Even though intuitively to me, I'm like, okay, if one of them has a reservation, it should hand it out. It is not going to do that. You actually have to go in and do some additional configuration. It's not a routing issue. You actually need to come in and set up, as you might be able to guess at this point, a super scope. Okay, it wouldn't hand out addresses. And I did some research and some Googling, and what I needed to configure was a super scope. A scope that contained the other scopes. That's all that you need to get that, that configuration working. So we're going to talk a little bit uh, about that. Now, what is a super scope? Basically, you, you take regular scopes and put them into a super scope. It gives you a, a single point of administration for both of those. It also allows it to hand out addresses. It can be used if a scope runs out of addresses, as it says. Um, and there's a couple things that we need to do. We need to add a new subnet to the DHCP server. And notice it's, it, it talks about multi-netting, where you lease addresses to clients in the same physical network, but the clients will be in separate network logically by subnet. Um, that's what you, you, basically that's the exact description of why you would need uh, a a um, super scope. Uh, make sure you configure routers to recognize the new subnet as well, especially if you're trying to get them to talk to each other. I was just trying to get them to hand out the addresses, and I needed to set up the super scope uh, for that to function. So let's go ahead and bounce on over to our server. And we have a single scope in here. We're going to create a new scope. And we are going to call this, uh, I feel like making this Leroy scope today. Leroy's scope. Uh, and it is our second scope. And we'll just go ahead and click next on that. And we'll put in the IP address. And click next, next. We will leave all of those defaults the same. And click finish on those. So we have these two scopes. It's inactive as well. We'll go ahead and activate uh, the scope as well. And let's go ahead and look at the super scope option. So we've got the two scopes set up and we'll focus right now over here on server one's DHCP information. We have them set up, but we need basically a super scope at this point 
to combine those. So you can see here we have the option, if I right click on the, uh, the IPv4 option itself, we have the option to create a new super scope. If I click that, it walks us through another wizard. So we'll go ahead and click next. We will call the super scope Dark Claw. Since the server's not ready and I, I like Dark Claw, we need to use it somewhere. So it is Dark Claw. And we can see we have available scopes in here. I need to uh, select those. So we have selected both Chris's and Leroy's scope. Click next, click finish. And you can see it changed the interface up here just a little bit by uh, collapsing both of those <laughs> underneath those. Yeah, it's kind of like a horoscope, but it's a super scope. <laughs> Thanks, David. Um, so you can see we can expand that. We have them both listed uh, underneath there. And you can see if we click on super scope, you can see the status of both of those is active. If I were to uh, deactivate one of those and say yes, go back to super scope, you can see one is now active and one is inactive. But the um, the maintenance of those is is fairly uh, fairly simple. Now, let's come in here and create another scope, and we're going to make this David scope. Click next. Ten dot eight dot seventy four dot one. So we have got a, a range of IP addresses in, in there. We'll go ahead and click next. And click next. We're just going to keep all the defaults again, not configure additional options, uh, and have his scope uh, set up so we can look at some of the fault tolerance options. And one of those would actually be right here. I can actually right click on the super scope and choose this configure fail over option. Let's peek at that as well. So you can see when we do that, uh, we have the option to select all the scopes or select one of those that are listed in that super scope. So we'll go ahead and choose to uh, select all. Let's go ahead and click next. We need to pick a partner server. So we are in SRV1. We will put in SRV. 02.int.contoso.com and it says the following scope already exists on the partner server we will need to delete it why does it already exist well because we set up split scope right we went through the split scope configuration wizard and it put it on both so we'd actually need to delete it to use that scope i was expecting there to be a conflict let's go ahead and just choose 10877 and you can see it was pretty happy with that option. Now, if you look at this, we have a relationship name uh, set up over here. And that is the default, uh, server1.in.contoso.com to server02. The maximum client lead time, we see the mode for it. Uh, and it can be set up to load balance. In other words, share the traffic between the two servers or it can be on hot standby so if one server goes down the other picks up we'll leave it at load balanced and you can see the balance percentage is set to uh, 50 50 but we can obviously come in and modify those options then you have a state switchover interval and the last part you have the option to enable message authentication from a security standpoint and you can enter a shared secret right here um, however, that is the last portion. In fact, if you uncheck that box, it undoes that. That's the last portion of the display. Right below that, which you can't really see, uh, it's just the back and the next and the cancel button. So you're not missing much of the interface. That's a little bit easier to see like this. So uh, we can set this fill of relationship up now by clicking on next and clicking on finish. We want to come in and check the progress of the fill over configuration. Uh, you can see we ha have the option to uh, add scopes on the partner server uh, and dis disable scopes, etc. Walked all the way through all of these and found no issues. So we click close and finish. 
And at that point, it should have created the uh, the fill of a relationship uh, between the two between the two servers. And you can see I've done a refresh on each of those. Note that I actually you didn't have to go in there and set the refreshes individually. But now we see the super scope on each. We see Chris's on each. If I open up this super scope, we just see Leroy's scope. And this one, we actually see two scopes. We see Chris's and Leroy's. As you remember, we set up one of these for fail over configuration here. So you'd really ideally want to have a plan in place. We sort of just threw it all out there and, and showed you the different aspects. But you probably wouldn't in production environment set it up like that. You would say, okay, these need to be in super scopes and it should be on super scope on all your servers. 